I think we're going to need another little round here. Let's just go ahead and do one of these. I was just uh, getting ready to talk about how to do how I do my hard boiled eggs. And uh, we're going to need another another little bottle for this one. Sorry about that guys. I don't know if you could see me while my phone was melting down or not. But uh, we're going to get back into it. And it's going to be awesome. Cheers everyone. Quarantine Kitchen Happy Hour is back. I'm starting to rack up some serious, uh, serious blooper reel for this show. All right. So eggs have 5 minutes and 12 uh, uh, seconds left to go. How to cook a hard boiled egg. I was talking about how I want to start at a boil and that way I know what temperature I can start uh, my timer at or I know what temperature I'm at when I start my timer and then I have an exact amount of time and I pull them out and they're consistent every single time and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm showing you just a base technique for doing my, my hard boiled eggs and they're still rolling along, along just beautifully. Okay, and so they're going for the 14 minutes. If you are looking for a soft cook eggs, like uh, uh, much like what I used to uh, eat when I lived in Germany, I, at the place I lived, they would all we had were like soft boiled eggs. We had I lived at a bakery where I worked. Okay, we would walk in the kitchen, kind of half asleep. We started very early in the morning, right? And we grab some some rolls and things, and then we had uh, uh, cold cuts in the fridge, all kinds of charcuterie, and we would slap unsalted sweet butter on that bread. The first time I was really eating so, uh, sweet butter and uh, cold cuts and a soft boiled egg and some really, really strong coffee. I got hooked on that stuff really young from working over there, right? And so um, <clears throat> that's what I'm used to. You're looking for that soft boiled egg, three to four minutes for those. They, they call them three minute eggs, right? Um, medium egg, five to seven. If you don't want that super runny yolk, okay? some people don't like it, it's all too runny, right? And then again, the hard yolk, 12 to 13 minutes, uh, uh, again, I usually say about 12, but I usually tell students 13, okay? Uh, let's see, Liliana, come, uh, uh, thanks for coming by. Let's see, Chevy's is dr uh, delivering margaritas at five for Peggy. Wow, that's impressive, very nice. Richie Todd, good to see you're back, sir. Sorry about that hiccup, guys. I hope my phone doesn't uh, overload again, okay? Very surprising, it's a fairly new phone, no cover on it. I must be burning up the airwaves. Okay, so, um, that's basically my, my egg spiel for a hard cooked egg, okay? That's all I really wanted to cover there. Uh, the next thing I wanted to cover was mayonnaise, okay? I have all these eggs and I'm just like, what do I do with them, right? So, hey, let's make a mayonnaise. So, when we're talking about mayonnaise, I kind of already showed ingredients. I'll show you that again before we get started. But I think a mayonnaise is kind of the st second step in a progression of three steps that we kind of teach in culinary school, okay? And this is, this is a, the, the emulsion lecture here, okay? Okay? You start out with a simple emulsion, which is oil and vinegar. And that oil and vinegar, it's like your Paul Newman's in the bottle, right? You go home, you shake it up, and it emulsifies, right? And, and gosh, I should back up and talk about what an emulsion is, right? Um, uh, uh, I always kind of talk about how some things don't go together. We know oil and water don't mix, right? And they're incompatible liquids. And if I can blend two incompatible liquids together, that, that's what we call an emulsion. We have emulsified eggs. Looks like Debbie has a bunch of eggs, too. You're going to need to make some egg salad. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, girl, this is, this is what it's all about that's what I'm up to right now okay so um the first emulsion uh, you know that I talked about that that Paul Newman's I shake it up and I blend those two ingredients together the oil and water but after a while they start to come apart they separate you guys know what I'm talking about you go to the grocery store and it's all lined up separated right and so when we shake that up what we call that is a temporary emulsion as soon as you shake it up and set it down it's coming apart very very slowly okay um, and then we have what we call a stable emulsion okay so Temporary emulsion is step one in culinary school. We teach you how to make a vinaigrette, okay? And, and let me back up again, okay? When we teach a vinaigrette, we generally teach a ratio here. Quasi, you're gonna remember this one. What's the ratio for vinaigrette? Typically, it's about three parts oil to one part vinegar, okay? Different vinegars have different acidities. Different oils are heavier and lighter. Um, so it's, it's kind of, a, 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 it varies depending on what ingredients you're using, but basically three to one is a good starting point for a vinaigrette, right? 
right? And so we kind of start the culinary students with that concept and then we teach them how to emulsify it. And you can put that together. You can use a little bit of mustard uh, with your yolk, okay? And with your, your acid. We're usually using an acid. We talked about that, okay? So today I'm using lemon. It could be a white vinegar or even a balsamic or any kind of vinegar, right? We mix that vinegar and that egg yolk with a little bit of mustard and this mustard contains a natural ingredient called lecithin. I'm not going to get into this science too much, but this lecithin is going to help us emulsify or bring together those two incompatible liquids, okay? It's going to emulsify them, okay? So that mustard and a little bit of technique. The idea here is adding the oil slowly into the mixture that I just described with the yolk and this and the acid, right? And we get it in there slowly, drop by drop. drop. If you've ever made mayonnaise, you know what I'm talking about, okay? We work Work it in slowly and then um, once it's all worked in, uh, uh, we, we taste it, we check for, for seasoning like salt and it's got enough flavor and everything, but we also check for acid balance, okay? I want it to have a little bit of tang. Mayonnaise is tangy, right? If it doesn't have that tanginess, I'm sending it back. There's my timer for my eggs. If it doesn't have that tanginess, I'm sending it back because I need that tanginess to break up that fattiness on my palate that I was talking about, right? And so. Let me get these eggs off of here. Let me uh, do a little camera work, a little film school here for you uh, amateurs that want to get into it. I'm your guy. So I put the lid on my pot and I'm holding it with a big old towel here. I'm not really fond of these giant towels. And I'm getting out most of this water. And the next step, by the way, just to spoil the plot here for you, is I want to cool these eggs off, okay? It took me about 13 minutes to cook them, and it's gonna take me about 13 minutes to cool them off too, okay? So right now I'm getting rid of most of that hot water. Come on, baby. And then I'm just gonna get the cold water running on it for a little while to bleed off most of that heat. I just put the spray on there. It'll help kind of move things around. Yeah. And I usually like fill this up, I dump it and fill it up again. And then you're gonna see me toss some ice on these guys. I need to stop the cooling, okay? Now, one big part of, uh, uh, or one big problem of a hard cooked egg, and we all know it is that dark circle around the uh, yolk, right? But another problem with hard cooked eggs is getting them out of the shell and the shell just sticks to them. It's just maddening, okay? If you take your eggs and you cook them off and you don't cool them off, they are going to get a really, really dark ring around that yolk and it's going to be near impossible to get those shells off. You're going to be breaking off little bitty pieces of shell. They get all under your fingernails and stuff. You're going to be kicking yourself, okay? So uh, uh, you got to cool them off. How long does it take to cool off, chef? About as long as it took you to cook them. I mean, you know, thinking logically, okay? So um, I've got one round of water in there. I'm going to kick that water out and we're going to get more cold water on these guys. I think I'm going to transfer it to another uh, container, actually. Uh, let me see. What do I got? What do I like? I'm not worried about breaking the shells right now unless I want to hang on to these for a while. You know, if I want to eat hard-boiled eggs all week just to have around, it's actually a great culinary kitchen snack. Nice little shot of protein, a good two-ounce egg or two, carry that around in your pocket, like I always do. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna save that dude for later. And we're done cooking, cooking for now. So I got a good amount of water in here and I'm gonna knock some of that out of there too. I got so much and it's bled off a little bit of heat. It's pretty warm up top, the heat rises, right? And so I'm gonna pour off a little of that and maybe get, uh, and I'm gonna get some ice in there too. I wanna really bring these down. I wanna stop that cooking. Stab it. And my ice is a precious commodity in the quarantine kitchen. I gotta save a little bit, just in case. When you throw the ice in there, make sure that you uh, roll things around, distribute the, the heat, the hot eggs around. Heat moves, cold doesn't move. 
So move those hot eggs around in the cold. And that cold will just, uh, well, spread, I guess. Cold doesn't spread. I'm saying it wrong. But you guys get the idea. Shocking my eggs. I'm going to, um, let's set the timer. I don't even want to crack them for at least 14 minutes, if not longer. I want them chilled to the core. Oh, that was good. And the phone's still working. Autumn, good to see you. Ms. Peggy Word. All right. I've got my beautiful hard-cooked eggs. They're sitting off to the side. I'll put them where you can see them. Eric Vilma Miller, good to see you, sir. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about eggs today. Oh, it was, a, it was a big chicken day yesterday. It was all about chickens in one form or another, I'll tell you. Okay, so we were going to talk about making an, an emulsion here, and I started talking about that, and then I was interrupted by having to stop the egg cookery, okay? So let's go back to that emulsion, okay? We were talking about uh, initially putting together yolk and, and uh, 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 an acid and maybe a little mustard, and we can stir that together with some vinegar, and then we add oil to it, and we can make a vinaigrette that kind of holds up, and but it'll still come apart after a while, okay? It's kind of a semi-stable emulsion, if you will, okay? And then, you know, the next, uh, the next stage is going to be Eric Miller. You're going to crack me up if you keep doing this. This is a new experience. Get snarky with me, buddy. <laughs> I am going to, uh, uh, um, so the next stage is adding an egg yolk to it. Remember this guy that I set aside earlier, okay? I can do the same thing with a vinaigrette, but when I add an egg yolk to it, it's going to really emulsify because this egg yolk has tons and tons more of that lecithin that I was talking about that was in the mustard. And by the way, that, that lecithin is just a natural component of mustard seeds, you know? Uh, mustard seeds have that, and eggs naturally have that lecithin too. And that lecithin is going to help, again, just bring that oil and that liquid, that water phase, you know, basically I'm using lemon juice today, that's going to bring it together into one homogenous mixture, okay? And so um, we are going to use this beautiful little guy. I have been, I've left it out. In fact, I've coddled it and I don't coddle most people, okay? But this egg I did, I coddled it to kind of bring it up to a little more room temperature. And then I am going to go ahead and I'm going to crack this little fella just like that. Okay, and I want to pull out the yolk, of course, okay? I'm not using the white here. Second that emulsion, I oughta. And there's my yolk. Oh, you guys couldn't see that. There you go, sorry. It was like that, I just did it in my hands. I'm gonna drop that in my bowl and just do a quick rinse. And then my egg whites, I'm going to save that. I'm probably just going to make breakfast tomorrow with another egg and just mix this in, make a little scramble or something like that. So there that goes. I don't want to throw anything away in quarantine kitchen, right? Everything is precious, right? Um, so uh, for this, by the way, I'm going to start out with this yolk. Um, you're also, for that yolk, I'm going to be working in about 8 to 10 ounces of oil. And that's another one of those ratios. I'm always throwing ratios at you guys. Um, for one yolk of mayonnaise, I get about 8 to 10 ounces when I'm done. I got about a cup, cup and a half of mayonnaise. Sometimes I get a little air in there, so I get more of it, right? And so that's kind of a good starting point. I put in two yolks, and now I got, you know almost three cups of mayonnaise to go, right? And so uh, we give you this ratio so you can just kind of work out there. Hey, Alma, good to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, so one yolk, you'll need about, I'll need about eight to 10 ounces. It's not exact. We're looking for a look. I, I want to look at how thick this mayonnaise is, right? I don't want like, like industrial strength, but I don't want liquid either, right? I want it to have a texture to it, right? Um, and the next thing is uh, for the acid phase, the lemon juice in this case, or if you're lose, using vinegar or whatever it is, um, you're going to want about a half ounce of liquid and sometimes I play with that a little bit depending on the flavor of it I want again that acid to break up the fat don't forget it's not just salad oil in this mayonnaise it's also that yolk that's really really rich and that coats your tongue too right um hey art good to see you brother 
Let's see. Um, other ingredients, I'm trying not to leave anything out. Uh, I mentioned you can use vinegar or lemon juice, right? Uh, mustard. I'm going to use a little bit of mustard as a stabilizer. It's got a little bit of lecithin, and also this is going to give it a background flavor. I'm not using so much that it's like hot dog sauce, okay? This is not for hot dogs. It's for a mayonnaise, and it needs to be way, way, way in the background, okay? But it's going to help your emulsion, and it's going to give you a background flavor that you just can't put your finger on, okay? So mustard is going in there. Um, my pepper today I don't want like black pepper I don't as I, I had this French chef once you like uh, I don't want it to look like uh, I don't everybody sounds German coming out of me but uh, I don't want it to look like uh, country gravy that's what he would say right you know so we don't use black pepper pepper in a white sauce like mayonnaise so I'm gonna use a little cayenne and cayenne again is actually another one of those things that's gonna open up the palate and let you taste the flavor of the mayonnaise <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but to a guy who had to cook mayonnaise uh, or had to taste mayonnaise all day, every day, like two shows a day, uh, uh, you know, to have somebody who had a mayonnaise that was well balanced and had that nice, nice pep to it from the cayenne that's not enough to give you an afterburn, but it just wakes up your palate and you can taste that acidity, that tanginess in there and it's breaking up the fat. Um, it's nice to run into those once in a while, but usually it's just like straight oil and egg yolk, you know? So uh, a little bit of cayenne really, really helps, okay? Uh, definitely appreciate that. And then finally, a little bit of salt, okay? I put the salt in after the vinegar's in there and mixed in with everything. I, I'm sorry, lemon juice today. Uh, I put that in after, okay? I never, never, Chef Teresa was with us the other day and uh, she talked about how we never wanna throw sugar or salt down on an egg yolk. It starts like kind of almost cooking or curing the outside of that egg and you get these little bits in there that are never gonna come out, right? So um, first step is I'm gonna go ahead and add my lemon juice. Let me make sure you guys can see that. I'm going to add my lemon juice right in there. I'm going to need a knife. This is a monster lemon, again, also from uh, Gravish Farms. All natural, filled with sunshine. And I'm going to do the old fork trick with this, okay? I showed you this, this one on another one, guys, on another vid. Let me get a little strainer. And you stick your fork in, you move it up and down while this hand squeezes up and down and squeeze this is adult education we're all being adults there's a lot of juice in that big old lemon i was really only looking for about a half ounce of juice and that gave me more than a half ounce right there but i'm going to hang on to this other half of lemon because hey this is a work in progress i might need a little more acidity to this okay so let me do a quick little wipe down My OCD is kicking in. And, uh, oh, it looks like a uh, seed got past my guard there. And now that I've got that in there, I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, mustard in there. Let me get a better shot of that. There we go. And this mustard, I don't want too much, okay? So what I'm going to do is just because I, I know I'll screw it up and put too much, I'm just putting like a teaspoon on there. That's really all I'm looking for, guys. Ta-da! That's all I'm looking for. Let me get that off of there. Washing off my spoon and the vinegar, or the lemon. Next, I'm going to throw in a little salt and stir it in along with some cayenne. And so that salt, I just poured it in my hand, and gosh, I'm going to need, I'm doing about a cup of mayonnaise to a cup and a half, so I need a good amount of salt, and I want it to um, get a chance to dissolve in there. So I'm throwing it in in the beginning, and now that that's in there, I really do want to kind of stir that together. I don't want that salt sitting on yolk. Very important. Muy importante. And then finally, just a little dash, the tiniest little dash of cayenne. I'm not looking for Cajun mayo here, okay? Just a little background. I think that's a p in between a pinch and a skosh, okay? Not sure what to call it. It's bigger than a bump, okay? And that's going on in there. I used about half a bump. There we go. So all of that gets mixed together. And we are in business. So again, it is the yolk. It's about, uh, it's one yolk. It's about a half ounce of vinegar or lemon juice. You could use a white vinegar. Heck, I could make a balsamic uh, mayonnaise, couldn't I? And it'll be kind of a, a brownish color, but I certainly could. Um, let's see, uh, uh, I mixed in a tiny bit of um, 
uh, mustard, maybe about a teaspoon of it, and about a pinch of cayenne pepper, okay? I put in maybe about two teaspoons of salt at this point, and the next thing I'm gonna do is bring my oil over here, okay? This whole show is gonna be about adding the oil here. Nate, good to see you, brother. Um, bigger than a bump, got it. So um, when I'm doing this, I got spoons over here, I always forget I grab them ahead of time. Uh, when I'm doing this, I need to go really, really slow with my oil, okay? And this little conversation usually makes culinary students really, really nervous. And they'll be just like, they'll do the whole process like one drop at a time and be in there and, and then whisk it and whisk it and whisk it. Um, and, and before you know it, um, they're, they're, they've gone nowhere and they've whisked their mayonnaise so much that it's like gray now because it's like the whisk in contact with a metal bowl, okay? So what we wanna do, what the, uh, what the approach here is or, is, or the desired goal, is to incorporate that oil into that that yolk okay and then once it's in there you don't need to whisk anymore get the next amount of oil in there and whisk it in okay I'll show you what I'm talking about okay so I usually recommend when when students are breaking their mayonnaise it's usually because they're adding it too fast so if you're a newbie at doing emulsions I recommend doing using a spoon and just putting in a few drops at a time okay we already talked about these ingredients a couple times and I just dropped in a few drops I'm gonna move that oil for now and I'm gonna get my whisk and I'm gonna blend that in and I'm gonna spin it and sweep it and and let me just say, a lot of chefs like to put something under their bowl so it doesn't, you know, move around. I want my bowl to move. I always say spin and sweep. Clean the sides of your bowl while you're spinning it. I don't want my bowl stuck on a towel or, or in, a, in a something, okay? So uh, you're going to see me spinning and sweeping a lot as I do this, okay? So first oil. I want to point out that I didn't stir very long before that oil was completely um, uh, uh, incorporated and now I'm ready to go with the next oil. So here it is, just a few drops. Uh, I'm using a spoon just so I'm not so tempted to use so much, okay? I'm going to stir that in and it took me all of three seconds to get that stirred in, okay? Let me do it again. This is how fast you should be incorporating your oil. What you don't need to do is this and this and this. You're just spinning your wheels for no reason, okay? So get the oil incorporated, add the next oil. Get that in there, add the next oil. In the beginning, we go slow like this, but once this starts coalescing and it starts looking a little mayonnaise-y, um, I can go faster on the oil, and we're gonna play with the dynamics of this oil. I got a bunch of little things here, okay? So, um, uh, uh, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. This is where I need the music, okay? So I'm going with another little blob of oil, and I whisk it in. It doesn't take long. Boom, there it is, it's in there. Now, one thing I wanna talk about, I don't want like puddles of oil around here, okay? This is what I usually call the Terminator 2 thing, and it's a little dated now, but um, uh, uh, if you ever saw that movie Terminator 2 where the robot guy like busted into a million pieces and then melted into little puddles, right? And all those little puddles are kind of like trickling towards each other, trying to coalesce back together and everything. The first time I saw that, I was like, that's how an emulsion breaks, right there, okay? Um, the oil is in your bowl, and you've got a little puddle of it over here, and there's another little puddle over here, and those puddles wanna come together. And then some other puddle wants to get into it too. They all squiggle towards each other practically in the bowl, and before you know it, you've got this big giant puddle of oil, which is now a grease uh, slick on top of your broken mayonnaise, okay? so incorporate very important that you do a little bit at a time get it all the way in there uh, uh, and uh, just don't take too much time with it but make sure that you get it fully incorporated every time okay here's another example it's right in the middle I incorporate I go around the bowl I'm gonna do a spin and sweep so there's no more of those little puddles around everything is completely together and it's actually starting to look like mayonnaise and what if I had like four half spoonfuls in there already it already looks like mayonnaise okay it's almost like I tried breaking a, a hollandaise in front of a class once and it was so embarrassing because I couldn't even break the thing uh, 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 and so I'm hoping that you know the opposite doesn't happen today because sometimes they do happen right uh, Carissa good seeing you okay um, let's see I'm gonna add in some more oil now that I've got an emulsion happening here I'm gonna get rid of my spoon Okay, now I'm feeling confident. Again, I was just using a spoon because that's what I recommend to students that have just broken uh, mayonnaise. Use a spoon, it'll 
allow you to use less, okay? So that time, I just dropped in about twice as much. It's down there if you guys can see it, okay? I'm gonna mix that on in there. It got really, really thick right there instantly. Here's an important point, right? Um, when we are, there's my timer, my eggs are cool, and they can just chill out in that, that ice over there. Wherever they are, I put them somewhere. Here they are. They're looking beautiful. Oh, oh you wanna say hi, to, hi everybody? Let's do that. The eggs are done and look how cold they look, okay? There's still a little ice floating around in there. We're gonna be making egg salad out of that in just a sec. Let's do this mayo. Okay, so I worked that oil in there and it's all incorporated and we're going for the next one. Here we go. This time I'm gonna pour in extra. Oh no, chef, oops, what did I do? I broke it, right? What you wanna do in this case is all the oils over on the bottom side of the bowl here and I kinda of work on one side of the bowl and make mayonnaise up in the corner here. Can you guys see this, okay? I'm making mayonnaise up here in the corner, and every once in a while I'll go down and grab a little of that oil from the bottom, because it's all pooled up down in the bottom, and then I slowly start increasing the size of the circles I'm using. Look at that, it's all thick up there, and it's all broken mayonnaise down there. Mayonnaise dynamics. Bringing in a little bit at a time, and working my emulsion up here. Now, I've got a functioning emulsion in there. I just got it all together, and just by dumping it all in. So why am I showing you this? Because this is how I teach uh, uh, culinary students how to make a hollandaise by themselves. You'll see students get together and one student's pouring, adding butter while the other student's trying to whisk. If I can just pour butter in the corner of my bowl and then just use a little bit of it at a time to build the hollandaise like up in the top corner of my bowl, then um, hey, it saves me time and I don't need that second guy just kind of standing there. Some, let's see, I, sometimes I like to mix in some shame or sadness. You know, uh, unicorn tears always uh, uh, give it a nice little sweet, sweet tang in the end as well, right? Okay, Ms. Mary, sorry you had to hear that, young lady, but thanks for joining us, okay? So I'm gonna keep incorporating oil here, okay? Um, now, I added a bunch of mayonnaise that time, okay? Um, right there, that was probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. And again, I'm just working the mayonnaise up top most of that oil's down there in the bottom. And this way I don't have to add the, the oil so many times. It's so strange, isn't it, that it's, the more of, of this oily liquid I add, the thicker it gets. Let's add a little more. There it goes, okay? And that right there, that's about the average that I'll throw in. Once this mayonnaise is pretty stable, like I said, the words I usually use are, oh, you've got a functioning emulsion there, okay? Once you have that functioning emulsion, you can add this oil much faster. So I'm doing a good, you know, half ounce at a time. And it's working right in, it's getting thicker. It's looking like mayonnaise. Now, it looks like mayonnaise right now. But remember earlier I gave you a ratio of that, like eight ounces of oil to one yolk? Um, I could stop right now, but this mayonnaise is going to be kind of eggy. You know what I mean? When I taste it, that yolk just kind of coats my palate, right? And so it really is good to get uh, at least eight ounces in there, you know, uh, uh, for that for that one yolk, okay? Anything less than that, and it, it's just going to be really rich and eggy and kind of funky, okay? So uh, I'm going to keep on adding some oil. I want to use that whole amount there. So that's what you're going to see here. It's about two more additions is what I'm looking at here, I think. Maybe three. And it's coming along. Beautiful. My eggs are over there still cooling. And there's another addition. That was a big one. Oh no, chef. What do I do? Is it gonna break? Spin and sweep. I'm gonna get all in there. Make sure I don't have any little puddles because I don't want that Terminator 2 situation. I don't want puddles of oil to start coalescing together. And there's, I'm just gonna make that my last addition before I start tasting. I might add more oil if this thing needs it. If it's very, very acidic from that lemon juice, you're gonna see me add more oil. Mayonnaise dynamics. That was a big addition, so again, I'm doing that trick where the oil's down on the bottom and I'm making mayonnaise up in the top edge of this bowl. Nobody taught me that. I had to pick it up on the street, okay? And that mayonnaise is looking pretty good, okay? It's tout. 
okay? It's taut. So let me give that a little taste here because now is, this is where the rubber meets the road. My texture is looking good. That is a, a functioning emulsion, as I said, and it's a, a usable mayonnaise, right? And so, um, goodness gracious, that was loud. So um, let me give it a little taste here and, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? I got my big spoon for dipping, my little spoon for tasting. Boop. Whew. Now this fellow is pretty acidic still. I was kind of hoping that would happen because I want to play with mayonnaise dynamics here. So let's do a, another scenario. Now, my mayonnaise is acidic, right? But I like my consistency now. What's gonna happen, what can I do to um, cut down the acidity of this mayonnaise? I can use more fat. Fat is gonna tone down that acidity. I probably need about another half ounce or so of fat in here and I'm probably gonna be in balance here. But I'm at the perfect texture that I want right now and if I add that extra oil in there, it's gonna get even thicker, it's gonna be too much. So at the end, I'm gonna look at my consistency. In fact, I could thin it now, but I'm gonna go ahead and work this in and then I'm gonna check that consistency and you might see me thin this. Do I wanna thin it with lemon juice again? Probably not because that's kind of my problem right now. It's too much, too much acidity, okay? So um, let's see, uh, I got a question out there. How long does mayo last? You know, usually when we're making stuff out there, we're trying to keep it no more than a week, you know? like fresh mayo or something like that yeah so right now I'm making it just for a recipe I'm gonna use right now so um yeah we were talking about whether to use water or acid to kind of thin this out it all depends on your palate so before you thin it you want to taste it and make sure that's really what you want to use to thin that out if I put too much oil in here I might thin it with lemon again just to get a little more acidity back so you guys see what I'm saying mayo dynamics okay so take a look at that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get one more little drop of oil And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work in a finish here of a beautiful little uh, local olive company, Biryani Extra Virgin Olive Oil. That's going to give me that nice, full, rich-bodied olive oil flavor at the end. And it is going to thicken this guy up. This mayo is a little heavy. And just to show you... I can keep adding oil. I don't want to put too much of this in because it's got a big flavor to it. But I'll do one more. Remember I said it was kind of tangy in the beginning and that was a good thing. It's getting really thick. This is why I wanted to put more oil in so I could thin it in front of you guys. And let's see if I went overboard with the oil. Let's see if I can still taste acid. Right now we're just having a conversation about flavor balance. There's my dipper and my taster. It's awesome, but I do need to thin this a little bit. It's still got that acidic bite to it, so I think I am gonna go ahead and use water for this. Sorry guys, try and get that in there for you, better. And just the tiniest little drop of water makes a big difference in an emulsion, guys. So just a little bit. And now it's got that flow back, it's right back where it was before I 